Many of us in life have longed after anticipated experiences from childhood that have gone unfulfilled as an adult. For whatever reason, these youthful desires for adventure don't happen. As you get older, they get filed to the back of your consciousness, seemingly forgotten, filed under the category of unrealized. That is, until life takes you to a place where you suddenly remember such an activity. Excitement fills your soul. Two! Double! Huh? I've got two cutties on at once. And those memories from a lifetime ago come flooding back. This has been a dream of mine since I was just a little boy. Fishing high alpine lakes for trout. Well, this dream is coming true right now. We're in Yellowstone Teton territory in Eastern Idaho, all above 8,500 feet. We're on the hunt for cutthroat trout. This big fish, high elevation adventure starts right now on the new Fly Fisher. Ooh, that's a nice sized fish. Absolutely fantastic. Good fish. The new Fly Fisher is supported by Visit Idaho Yellowstone Teton Territory Orvis Fly Fishing Scientific Anglers Trout Unlimited WeatherTech Canada The Rocky Mountains span from the far north of Western Canada to New Mexico in the Southern USA. 3,000 miles of rugged beauty. The Rockies also make up a major part of the state of Idaho. In Eastern Idaho, as with the rest of the state, they are revered for their beauty, their majesty, the recreational adventures they afford, and of course, the fishing opportunities in both foothills and at elevation be they small spring creeks, large rivers, reservoirs, or high alpine lakes, Yellowstone Teton territory is an angler's mecca for multi-species in a variety of settings. We're in Victor, Idaho, making Teton Valley Resort our home away from home on this high alpine adventure. Doing day trips into the mountains in search of cutthroat with Idaho fish and game biologists, John Heckle and Brett High. Idaho Fish and Game has been working in the state to advance fishing opportunities, and a major draw to angling in the area is the incredible alpine lake opportunities available to everyone. We are pretty famous for our river fisheries, and we're, we're known as the trout corner of Idaho. We have the Henry's Fork and the Teton and the South Fork, some great river fisheries, not to mention Henry's Lake, a flatwater fishery. But what a lot of anglers and people don't realize is Idaho is a tremendous spot for alpine lake fishing. A lot of Idaho is public land, forest service, BLM, and we have over a thousand lakes in Idaho, alpine lakes, that have fish. And we have a wide variety of fish species that we, that we stock in these mountain lakes and manage for. Some of the more exotic species are golden trout and arctic grayling. A lot of these alpine lakes just provide great opportunities for solitude, for fishing, for diversity in your catch, and all of that in a pretty scenic background. As far as travel to these lakes, it also provides a, a, a lot of diversity and that's intentional. The land managers make a concerted effort to provide different methods of travel to their lakes. So there's some lakes that you can drive an ATV or a side-by-side -side to, and there's some lakes on the other end of the spectrum that there's not even a trail to. So you have to bushwhack and find your own way. That's what I find appealing is uh, that diversity and, and how you can access the lakes, the solitude, usually good fishing because they're generally low amount of pressure at these lakes, and so you get good catch rates, and then the scenery. It's just, it's a great opportunity, and, and not a lot of people know about that part of Idaho. Naturally, most of those thousand plus lakes in Idaho, alpine lakes, uh, were not 
lakes that had fish. So these were fishless lakes. And in our management plan, um, we identify areas where we remain lakes, keep them fishless for amphibians, reptiles. But in the places where we stock, we do take into consideration how productive the lake is, as well as its size and how much angling pressure they receive. We consider these lakes uh, put grow intake. Most of them are stocked on a three year rotation. So the fish that are put in are one to two inches long. They're small fry that we stock. A lot of them are stocked through the air, either helicopter or airplane, most through airplane, but some will backpack the fry in and, and release them on the shorelines. But it takes a few years for them to grow to a catchable size where anglers can harvest them or catch them and release them. And when it comes to harvesting or releasing, where these are, you know, hatchery supported system, there's, there's nothing wrong with harvesting a few fish or if you're up there and staying the night and need to supplement your dinner or you just want to have some fresh trout. Because like I said, these are lakes that generally didn't have fish before and we maintain their populations through stocking. Well, we decided to hit Divide Creek Lake. Brett stocked this lake years ago and was keen to return to see its progress. This lake you can hike to, 12 miles round trip, but what we decided to do was dirt bike in. So we loaded up our trucks and headed to the trailhead. Dirt biking is a fun and exciting way of accessing remote alpine lakes. But as we learned very quickly, access in the mountains can change season to season. What was once considered an intermediate level trail to access the lake had suddenly become quite treacherous due to previous scree slides. So we decided to pull the plug and head out safely, or so I thought. Looks like you were in for a I was in the rhubarb. It didn't land on me though. Brett decided that we'd hit a small high elevation stream to save the day. This section is on public land and was one of his projects years ago. The game has switched to cutthroat and rainbows. Gave it a try. That was an adventure. <laughs> it was an adventure. Um, you know what? That's the part of high alpine fishing is that you never know what you're going to come across. It was a different trail than the last time you were here, wasn't it? It has a lot more rock in it, just more challenging than what I remember. It was difficult. Right. It was, there was some blood spilled, and uh, <laughs> and as you say, pride was hurt. But yep. <laughs> the good thing about where we are, however, is that if you fail or you can't get to the lake that you want, you've got all kinds of other opportunities. What's going on? Yeah. So here we have a stream running through this section of public land, this is BLM, and uh, it's a stream where we still have some native cutthroat trout, but primarily what we should expect to catch are rainbow trout. Right. We have some wild rainbows in here, up to around 14 inches, right. and uh, with the fast water, it should be a good fight. Cool. Did you hear that? Yeah. Hoppers. Hoppers. I got one tied on. Let's see what we can do. <laughs> Polarized sunglasses are a must in this situation. They're a must all the time, really. Not only for eye protection from wayward casts, but also from willows and branches. Look at the glare on the surface of the river. Good polarized sunglasses allow some of that glare to be cut, in turn allowing you to see your terrestrial, and ultimately, that take. So I've got a hopper on here, a small one. We've been hearing the buzzing and the snapping of hoppers walking around. Uh, so I decided to go big, go big with something that should be on the menu. Couple casts in, and this guy came up and just crushed it. Let him fall back into the net. Not too bad after all, <laughs> after being here for five minutes. Gorgeous little fish. Always a good sign. Either it's a good sign or a bad sign. <laughs> you catch a fish right away. Hopefully this bodes for a good afternoon of fishing. But sometimes you catch one right away and it's over before it even starts. <laughs> That's Murphy's Law of Fishing. But here you go. Small creek, beautiful rainbow. 
awesome fish to start the afternoon off. Thanks, bud. Where you go? Not too bad. Small alpine creeks offer incredible adventure for anglers. For this creek, I'm using a four-weight, nine-foot rod with a weight-forward, four-weight floating line. Leader is a nine-foot, 4X tapered leader to my hopper. Now, it's Brett's turn. There's a bunch of pea gravel in there too. It looks great. That was fun. That was fun. That's where waders come in handy. Thanks, Mark. Nice fish. That was a unique take. He, he took it downstream. He did, yeah. It was almost like the current was skating the fly. It was going really fast, but yeah, uh, he came and wa he wanted that pink hopper. He did. <laughs> he did. I get teased for fishing a pink hopper, but I can see it, and the fish don't seem to mind. Nice wild rainbow. Awesome. Good stuff. Thank you. You bet. Thank Successful you. day. Awesome day. <laughs> Fish. 11th, oh, it's a good one too. Nice rainbow, took the nymph. I'm glad I put that dropper on. Where's my net? I lost my net. Lost my net. So I'll just wet my hand. Again, took the nymph. They've sort of turned off the hopper now, later in the day, I guess. There's some midges flying around. Good fish, nice wild rainbow trout. Go, go, <laughs> there you go. So overall, you've, since, since you've started your career, Brett, you've seen a, an overall improvement of the fisheries here in Idaho? Is that, is that safe to say? That's an excellent question. And I would say yes, yeah. I think a lot of that may be due to just environment, uh, abiotic factors like weather, water, but some of it's also due to the way the anglers behave. A lot more catch and release now, so we're not seeing over harvest anywhere in the state that I know of. And then we just have more research, more tools available now than what we had 20 years ago. And with that, the storms rolled in, so we decided to call it a day. Not before having some fun with one of the locals. The next day, I decide to explore the Victor area on a DIY do-it-yourself. Using Idaho Fish and Game's extremely useful online alpine lake locator, I was able to find a great drive to, hike to, lake that held cutthroat. The best way to find out about Alpine Lakes in Idaho would be to go to the Fishing Game website and check out our Fishing Planner. And in our Fishing Planner, it's a very interactive uh, web tool that can bring up a map. And you, you click on a lake, it'll tell you the name of the lake, and it'll bring up its stocking history and uh, some recent records of any surveys that have been conducted in the lake. So you'll see what species are there, when it was last stocked, and it will provide some access information, but most of the, the travel information, you'll need to go to a different source, like a Forest Service travel plan map or a BLM map. But as far as the fishery, the, the fishing planner is a great tool. Just looking through the map, clicking on lakes, click on nearby lakes, get that information, and then figure out how to get there. That's part of the adventure. 
So I did just that and took off on my own adventure in Eastern Idaho. Well, you wanna talk about ease of access, this is about as easy as it gets. A short drive in and then about a mile walk on a pristine trail, this little lake is absolutely perfect. It was stocked three years ago with cutthroat, hasn't been touched since, we're gonna see what this guy has to offer. Oh, and I picked up a new net from a local fly shop too. <laughs> How do you like that? I just threw my fly out to, uh, to strip out some line. And this, another fish just surfaced right there. And this little cutthroat came up and ate my hopper. We've been fishing a couple of days here and there's been hoppers all over the place. So I decided to start with a hopper. Sure enough, here we go. How beautiful is, look at the gash on that little guy. Perfect little cutthroat. A walk to high alpine lake. Hopefully this is gonna be a very productive day. <laughs> oh no, a fish on the first cast. That is superstitiously a very bad sign. And that omen stuck with me for a little while until I dropped my terrestrial snobbery and tied on a woolly bugger. I think that first fish on that hopper was actually a fluke. Uh, <laughs> just lucky happenstance because uh, I haven't seen another one since so I switched over to a black woolly bugger with a, a gold bead head. We'll see if that does a trick. Got him. That little guy came and hit this woolly bugger a couple of times before he came buttoned. And uh, I like this spot because there's so much structure, there's so much timber. What I'm doing is I'm throwing a, a black beadhead woolly bugger and counting it down 30 seconds. Uh, as you can see, the shoreline drops off quite steep here. So I'm counting it down, letting it get down to where the structure is, and then starting a slow retrieve. This got hit three times before he got hooked. Right in the corner of the mouth. Look at that, what a great fish. Awesome. It's not all about size, it's about having fun. And this is 100% fun. fish. That black woolly bugger, you know, I always keep, I always keep some in my pack because they're, grab my net here, they're absolutely deadly on all species. I'll bring them around the side of the log. You know, they look like a leech. They pulsate with, with that fur. They're just so super fishy, these things, and everything eats them. Look at that, what a gorgeous cutthroat. Put your hands, I think it flies it. Nope. Let's take a look. They are active, the water's freezing. 
I chose this spot because right beside me there's a tiny little trickle of river coming in. Look at that, fine spots all towards the back of the body. Just gorgeous fish. Well, that was a hit for sure. Come on back. Saw him. He may have tasted steel, that one. Maybe. Fish. So in walking around this lake, fishing it on foot, no waders, this is, there's two patches of grass that the first patches of grass we've seen, and it has produced the best trout of the day so far. Look at that. Again, fishing a black woolly bugger with a gold head. Now he knows he's hooked. There we go. So, proof, structure holds fish. There's a patch right there and a patch right there. I fished the outside of the left patch, thinking I was gonna move my way towards the, the middle of the two, but this guy didn't even give me, give me a chance. Oh, he's fat too. Fat cutthroat. He also has that in his mouth. So, you've got a cutthroat. That's a salamander he's eating. That's a salamander. Look at its back legs. And look at the size of it compared to the size of the fish. They're almost as long as each other. That's incredible. Maybe I should up the size of my fly. <laughs> Dude, that was weird. That was, I can't believe how big that salamander was. Like, these things are voracious. For a, a cutthroat to eat something of almost its same length? <laughs> That's next level, man. Crazy. I just thought it had something like nasty in it. I was trying to save it. Didn't realize I pulled out its dinner. And he hadn't even swallowed the whole thing, and yet it still eating woolly buggers. Nuts. What a fantastic day of DIY fishing in Yellowstone Teton territory. What a little gem of a lake. And to think there are a thousand of these in the state? Incredible. Teton Valley Resort, located in Victor, Idaho, is an adventurer's dream home base for all seasons. Multiple private cabins play host to couples or larger groups and are very well appointed with excellent Wi-Fi. All the amenities of home and incredible access to all things Idaho. Full kitchens, linens, gas fireplaces, and smart TVs. You don't miss any comfort of home. Outside, guests find a hot tub, heated pool, pickleball courts, and an on-site bistro. Perfect for anglers, travelers, RVers, and glampers. Teton Valley Resort prides itself on excellence on every level. It's day three on my Yellowstone Teton Territory high alpine adventure. Today we're fishing a high alpine set of lakes that are accessed by horse, llama, or foot. These lakes are very productive and though it takes a bit to access them, the journey to fish is absolutely incredible. We meet up with biologist John Heckel and hit the trail. We stock our high mountain lakes with, with fry that are anywhere from like 40 to 60 millimeters. Sometimes they're a little bigger, but we stock them at that size 
uh, so that they can adapt to the conditions that they're in as fry and become adults. And we also do it at that size because we can stock more fish that way. You could consider them wild fish. If you catch one, you're, you're not gonna know that it was stocked as a fry. Um, so that's the other piece of the puzzle is when we put in cutthroat trout, um, they're fertile cutthroat trout, so they can develop a population in a lake and subsequently anglers will be catching 100% wild fish. If it can support fish, uh, we've more than likely tried stocking it with some kind of salmonid species. Because of that, uh, not only do we have a lot of high mountain lakes in Idaho, um, we have a variety of ways to access them. So it's not this exclusive thing where only people that can hike can go get to them. If you don't want to hike, there are also outfitters that will take you there on horseback. Um, there are outfitters that will let you rent horses and llamas if you're privy to you know, using those animals. You can even rent ATVs and drive to some high mountain lakes. Um, so here in the Upper Snake in Eastern Idaho, uh, there are opportunities where folks can, can do it all. Um, and if they have none of the equipment, it's okay. They can hire an outfitter or they can even rent the equipment themselves and, and make that trip happen. One of the resources that folks can go to if they do wanna go that outfitter route um, is the Idaho Outfitter and Guide Board. They've got resources there where if you wanna go that route, uh, you can find a, a guide or an outfitter that's in the location that you're gonna plan your trip to. So no joke, this is one of the highlights of my life. I've been dreaming about doing this since I was a little kid. Fishing, high mountain lakes. Like, look at this thing. It's not even two acres big, and it's full of cutthroat trout. Got tiny little beetles on. Let's go see what we can do up here in the mountains of Idaho. So that was my third cast. Third cast, and I, I gave up on it, to be honest with you. I was bringing the beetle back in, and as I was, I saw this cutthroat coming across. He saw it, came up, and just ate it right off, right off the surface. Totally fun. Haven't been here for two minutes. It looks like a good fish. First fish of the day. Nice cutthroat. Good fish, man. That's awesome. So, I'd like to think that we caught that fish because of talent, <laughs> but clearly not. It's all because of luck and understanding what you're looking for when you come to a new lake. Uh, we walked around the, the outside of the lake for the first time. I've never been here before, and we had to cross a small creek. I mean small, it's like this wide. Um, so why not start there? You've got fresh water coming in, cold water coming in, presumably oxygenated water coming in, and it might be a source of food. It might be a source of whatever, something that these fish are, are um, queuing in on. So start with a fresh water source, second cast, great, fantastic cutthroat. <laughs> Thank you. 
I keep fishing this creek inflow for another hour or so and don't see anything. So I switch it up a bit. Nice. Now I didn't see the, uh, the dry drop in any way, but what I did see was the flash on the nymph and um, it's just like sight casting, right? So you see something that's not normal, set the hook. Now the last time th this lake was stocked, from my understanding in talking with John, is that it was stocked back in 2020. Um, now, but this fish has me excited for one reason, because a 2020 fish should be 15, 16, 17 inches. This is not. This is a little guy. I wonder if it's wild. Well, it's gotta be. If there hasn't been a stocking program. Great fish, little guy. Took the dropper. Nice fish. Good one. Beautiful orange gash. On the surface? Yep. Nice. Slight, very, it was a small fish, but still took it. There's a big lay down right there too. So things have changed. You know, you have a long hike in and uh, catch a couple fish right away, which is great. And then it shuts off. Often happens, you just got to start going at the, at the fly box to see what they want. So we switched to something really small and subsurface. Uh, a small little electric leech, uh, change positions, couple of casts, and we got a nice cutthroat. Now I'm gonna get wet if I'm not careful here, which isn't the worst thing in the world. All right, so things have changed. Uh, we caught a really nice cutthroat right away, got a tagged fish, a smaller fish after that, and things shut down. So instead of going surface hopper dropper, we pared things down big time and went down to a a, a very small subsurface rig. So these two flies are literally riding two or three inches under the water. Let's see what we've got. Now these are Yellowstone, Yellowstone strain cutthroat and they are fantastic fish to target on fly. Look at that. Perfect, absolutely gorgeous. So when things change, go low and slow. Okay, so the flies we're using here on this high mountain lake in eastern Idaho is a fly called the Mighty Mouse. And then 18 inches down from that is a Henry's Lake half-assed renegade. And that's the one that did the trick. So what I'm doing here is I've got these weed pockets where there is no weeds. So a pocket void of weeds in a weed bed. And uh, what I'm doing is I'm casting into the center, making sure that my flies are in the middle of that hole and then letting them slowly sink. And then once I think they're down, count them down 15 or 20 seconds, then you start your slow retrieve. And I'm thinking, oh, there's a fish that just moved. 
And I'm thinking that that is gonna be enough as those flies rise up to show, show that they're emerging. And there we go, just like that. And that triggers the eat. Little bit better fish. Once again, took the FS Renegade. But that's the ticket, right? Is you gotta find out where they're feeding in the water column. If they're not feeding on the surface, go two inches below. If that's not happening, go a little deeper, a little deeper, a little deeper till you're dredging the bottom. See what they need. They'll tell you what you want, what they want. Perfect. Better fish, great colors on this one. good one too so that's the ticket count it down 10 15 seconds that's what they're telling you they want give it to them that way oh this one took the top fly took the mighty mouse other ideas. There we go. Look at that. You know, the fall time is such a great time to target these fish in these high mountain lakes because everybody's hunting. There's nobody around. We saw one hunter at the uh, at the trailhead and that was it. The whole place to ourselves. Flies are out. Now he's not a giant, but he's well worth the hike up to this lake. Now that makes the trip all the more worth it. Now, what we're gonna do is there's a lake just down the way. Apparently, it's a lot smaller and there's a ton of fish in it. We're gonna go check it out now. So the equipment used on this high alpine adventure fishing for cutthroat trout in Yellowstone Teton territory is as follows. It's really quite simple. Four weights and five weights, nine foot fly rods with fast action so you can get those flies out into the lake. The reel is nothing more than a small to mid arbor reel, a vessel to hold your line. These fish are not gonna take you into your backing. They're not gonna run very far. Lines are matching four and five weight, weight forward floating lines and the leaders were nine to 12 foot 4X and 5X tapered leaders with matching 4X and 5X tippet. For flies, we used a variety of small streamers, including the Mighty Mouse and the Half-Ass Renegade, flashback pheasant tail nymphs, and of course, quill droppers. And don't forget your bear spray. That's really all you need for fishing these high mountain lakes for cutthroat trout here in Yellowstone Teton territory. This little alpine lake is literally no bigger than a basketball court. With inflow and outflow, the fish can, in high water events, travel from the top lake to the bottom. It must be both deep and have some sort of spring upwell, or it would definitely freeze in the winter. And if you can believe it, this little lake holds giant fish. We came down to this little lake, tiny little lake, and uh, I mean, look at the size of it. It's an acre big, and it's got cutthroat that have come down from the upper lake. And uh, there was a giant that swam under that tree. Uh, I was trying to get him out, but this little guy came and ate it. I'm not complaining, I'll take it all day long. Oh, nice. Great, we're here underwater. Let's just see. This is so much fun. 
Can't believe it. High mountain hunting. Look these awesome little cutthroat. Ate the hopper. Why is Look at that. Just ideal. This is great. So that fish came from the structure on the right of the pond. Another little guy. I know there's gotta be big ones in here. But that's fine. This is fun fun. He struck it, not like a cutthroat either. He came and just whacked it. So I'll show you the fly I'm using. Let's let this guy go. Just gently. So a little tiny green bottom, yellow bottom hopper. Nice little fly. Um, you know, floats high and uh, little twitches. The legs go crazy. It's got little rubber legs on it. Legs are back and forth and driving these fish nuts. Two, double. Holy crap. So I just tied on a, uh, the rig, the subsurface rig that I had on back up top. And <laughs> I've got two cutties on at once. First time in my career that's happened. What do you know? It's the most unbelievable. One took the renegade, the other one took the mighty mouse. It's unreal. Look how red those cheeks are, oh my gosh. Oh, what a show. Got them both. I'll tell you what, this has never happened to me before. I've had bass on a double rig, but one's always come off. Never too cutthroat at once. Come on in, take a look. There, that one is, look at that. You think that one's colorful? Wait for the next one. And those two fish, along with the long grass, gave me one heck of a tangled line. I had my fly about 20 feet off the shore as I tried to untangle myself. Oh, got one. <laughs> That's a good fish. So I was just undoing a tangle and uh, I had this thing, my rig dead, dead sticked in the water and uh, moved it, lifted it up out of the dirt. Oh, where's my net? Oh, that's a good fish. And this guy picked it up as soon as this 
streamer came out of the mud and he was there. So you go from a unique fishery, a unique catch, and a double to a unique fish. Wow, what a good fish. Look at the size of this pond and the size of this trout. Better to be lucky than good. You are not gonna believe the size of the cutthroat trout that has come out of this tiny, tiny little pond. If you wanna ever think about coming to Idaho and catching high mountain cutthroat in small alpine lakes, what do you think of that? <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, the tag, 2192215. One of the cool things about this fish is that it's part of the Fish and Game tagging program. So I'm gonna record the tag, call it into Fish and Game, and it'll give them information on when it was originally tagged, how many times it's been caught, and where it's been caught. Great program. All right, let's unbutton this guy and let him go. Well, <laughs> what an amazing fish. What an incredible day. I mean, I've been dreaming about high alpine lake fishing since I was this big. And believe me, it lived up to every single expectation I've been thinking about since I was five years old. Well, this is the part of the story that I hate to tell. This is the end, the end of our high alpine cutthroat adventure. I wanna thank everybody in YTT and of course those at Teton Valley Resort for their hospitality and amazing accommodations. For everybody here at The New Fly Fisher, thanks for watching. For more in our series, check us out at www.thenewflyfisher.com. My name is Mark Melnick. Thanks for watching, and hopefully one day we'll see you in the high mountain lakes of Eastern Idaho. The New Fly Fisher is supported by Visit Idaho, Yellowstone Teton Territory, Orvis Fly Fishing, Scientific Anglers, Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada.